Hi, uh, my name is Renat Panda and I will now present our work on how Spotify API uh, features compare to what we have in terms of music emotion recognition state of the art. Uh, giving a brief introduction, uh, the way we consume music changed dramatically over the last decades. Instead of buying physical uh, or even digital media, we are shifting towards music access using streaming services that offer massive catalogs such as Spotify, YouTube Music and so on. And this has its consequences, namely, how can we browse uh, such massive collections effectively? Uh, the current search methods are limited to artist, title, genre and so on. And to discover new music, these services normally offer playlists or recommendations that are mostly built using users' likes but not the music content itself. Still, uh, we know that throughout history, music has always been connected to us in the most diverse contexts, from war to religion, entertainment and so on. And this happens because music serves us as kind of a language to express emotions. Uh, it is capable of arousing us with some uh, even saying that this is the ultimate reason why we engage with it. And this originated a research field called Music Emotion Recognition. This idea has several applications, but the topic is complex because it bridges knowledge not only from computer science, but also music and psychology. Still, uh, it is a typical machine learning, learning problem where we have a taxonomy, such as the Russell Quadrants with happy, sad, tense and calm music. Then we have a set of songs tagged with these annotations. Features are extracted from the audio signals of these songs. And finally, uh, some machine learning logic is applied. Uh, several approaches have been proposed, but nowadays the main issues are first, uh, the lack of public datasets that are large and high quality because it is very hard to get control of the emotion annotations from users and secondly, there is a so-called glass ceiling uh, with few improvements in the field over the last decade. Some authors point to a semantic gap where most of the works uh, focus on machine learning algorithms but use generic, low-level, non-musical features that are far from what we as humans associate with emotions. Also recently, deep learning and feature learning has, uh, has been tried, uh, but the lack of large data sets does not help such strategies in music emotion recognition. On the other hand, uh, streaming services are becoming extremely good at recommending us the music we want to listen and this made us raise a question. If music carries emotional information and it plays such a big role, are these recommendation systems, even if indirectly already exploiting some of these relations and this information uh, in music? To get an answer, we picked Spotify since it is the major player and provides a public API. From what is publicly known, uh, Spotify models its users' musical taste by mining data from several uh, different sources, initially uh, from listening data and playlists using collaborative filtering, but uh, nowadays also including uh, natural language processing, and even information from the, the audio content itself, from the audio signal. It provides publicly 12 audio features for all uh, its tracks, which are uh, whether the track is acoustic or more electronic, if it is suitable for dancing, a measure of intensity, if it contains vocals, uh, the key, if it is live with an audience, the loudness, whether it is major or minor, the presence of spoken words, the estimated tempo in bits per minute, the time signature, and uh, finally a measure of positiveness conveyed by the track. Uh, these uh, are all very high level, combining several other musical cues. Uh, for instance, sensibility combines tempo, 
uh, rhythm stability, beat strength, and so on. To assess the importance of these 12 features we built on our previous work, starting with a dataset of 704 clips and quadrant annotations, which are happy, sad, tense, and calm. For each of these clips, we got the 12 Spotify audio features, as well as the uh, 100 features that were most relevant to emotion classification in our previous work. Uh, we studied the relevance of each of these features using ranking algorithms as well as correlation. And uh, finally, we did classification experiments using uh, support vector machines with tenfold cross-fold uh, validation. As for the results, when comparing the songs labeled by humans to uh, the energy and valence estimated by Spotify, we see some bias. Uh, towards the happy quadrant, uh, visible in the Q1 red versus blue bar uh, on the left and uh, also on the scatter plot on the right. Also, uh, when the song energy is low, Spotify estimates more of the calm songs as actually being sad. Uh, and this can be seen in the scatter plot with several purple points, which are songs placed in the third quadrant in Q3. Regarding the features relevance, three of them clearly stand out, uh, which are energy, valence and acousticness, which empirically seems logical. In addition, a more in-depth analysis shows that an acousticness near zero, that is, uh, more electronic sounds, is much more common in happy or tense music, which also means music with high energy. Thus, a uh, high negative correlation between energy and acousticness features was verified. In the classification tests, we saw that these first Spotify features are highly relevant, but after the fourth feature, the remaining don't add much to our problem. The next step was to combine both feature sets. Here, we noticed that the same three Spotify features were highly ranked with the addition to mode. Uh, this addition is a consequence of combining many more features, allowing them to interact and raising the importance of some features that alone might not be useful. Um, as for the classification tests, in the table we see that with 5 to 10 features, uh, the combined set uh, improves the results. However, uh, when the complete feature set is used, the difference becomes non-significant. To conclude, we verify that some of the 12 Spotify features are emotionally relevant and a very high level when compared to the state-of-the-art features. However, uh, these are just another brick into closing the so-called semantic gap and additional high-level features are needed. Uh, namely related to melody, musical texture, uh, even capturing characteristics of the singer's voice and so on. In our opinion, having a set of such 10 or even 15 high-level audio features is as important as achieving a perfect uh, machine learning classifier, since uh, it would allow us to achieve our ultimate uh, goal which is to be able uh, to explain and understand with a set of uh, human uh, readable rules how emotion and music relate.